Hello grade 9 science class and welcome back again. This is lesson 7 as you can see the title elements and their symbols. So element and symbols are two words and are key points broken up by periodic table and atom there. Um, these are words that we are going to get familiar with. This kind of feels like a new start within this unit, the chemistry unit. So uh, we're going to start talking about that big chart, uh, the periodic table. You have it in your notes. We're going to point out some key features to it. And then we're going to talk about what's on it from essentially now until the end of the unit. So get familiar with the periodic table, key point one. This is the periodic table. Um, so it is called the periodic table of the elements. You can see it is very nicely grouped into columns and rows. That is very, very handy because all the columns have elements with the same properties. Everything in this first column has similar properties. Everything in this yellow second column has similar properties. Everything in this column under the N here has um, the same properties. Everything under the O. Um, and notice how I'm referring to them by N and O. Those are their symbols. Nitrogen is N and oxygen is O. Copper is Cu. Calcium is Ca. And our goal is to get familiar with essentially everything from this line up. So the numbers 1 through 36. If I ask you where aluminum is, you should be able to pick it out. If I ask you where lithium is, we should be able to pick it out by the end of the unit. Uh, it's important that we get familiar with this top part as well as just a few underneath. Um, we're going to um, have kind of a hunt through here, uh, four different elements, their names and their symbols, and you will see that. But what I want you to be able to get quickly is one through 36, hydrogen through krypton. So this is the periodic table, and you can see the symbols, you can see the names, they've got numbers, they've got other numbers with decimals underneath it. What does it all mean? We're going to get into that as we move through um, this, uh, let, uh, this unit. So first of all, an element. An element is a pure substance that cannot be broken down into simpler uh, substances. Elements are made up of identical atoms. And each of these is an element. So beryllium is an element. Boron is an element. Phosphorus is an element. And if you have a bunch of phosphorus, that's a pure substance. If you have a bunch of aluminum, that's a pure substance. Fluorine, neon, chlorine. If you have a bunch of the same and only the same, that is a pure substance. So an element is a pure substance that cannot be broken down into simpler substances. Elements are made up of identical atoms. So each individual element, um, individual piece of that element is an atom. They are represented generally by small little balls. So in order to shorten things up, scientists came up with symbols that represent each element that's known to us. A chemical symbol is just an abbreviation of the name but there are some rules. Uh, a single letter symbol is always capitalized. That is very, very important. Carbon is C. If I go back to our uh, periodic table, carbon right here has the big C. It is capitalized because it is a single letter. Um, that is its symbol, C. Uh, if it has two letters, the first letter must be capitalized. In this case, uh, aluminum. The second letter must be lowercase. So we have AL, capital A and L. Uh, if we have magnesium, that would be Mg, capital M, little g. Sodium, although it doesn't have any Ns or As in it, is Na, it's right here. And it has a capital first, and then a lowercase. Same with lithium and beryllium. Anything that has two starts with an uppercase and ends with a lowercase. So again, make sure you pause and write these things down. Uh, and you can go back and you can listen again. So many symbols are not just the first letter of the name of the chemical. Some are different, which are a little bit harder to remember. Gold is AU, it's from Latin. Silver is AG, also from Latin. Tungsten is W, from the German Wolfram, which I always think is cool, and that's how I remember what tungsten is. Tungsten, Wolfram, that's W. And then lead, I remember, is PB, because it stands for plumbum, which I believe is Latin as well, but also makes me laugh. 
So uh, it's not always the first two letters. It often is, but not always. These are some that uh, are a little bit different and are interesting to remember. Gold being AU and silver being AG are kind of different. Uh, some are named after where they were discovered or the people who discovered them. So Scandium was discovered in Scandinavia. That's like Norway and Finland and all that good stuff up there. There's Berkelium, which uh, has a symbol BK and was created at the University of Berkeley. And then we have Einsteinium, which is ES, and it was named in honor of Albert Einstein, who discovered it. So we name these things in weird ways and we give them interesting symbols but each symbol corresponds to a name. And you can find that on the periodic table at any point. If you go into your diagram in your booklet, you'll be able to find ES is Einsteinium and BK is Berkelium and uh, SC is Scandium. You'll be able to see all that. And that's the beauty of the periodic table. You can use it um, constantly and it pretty much never changes. We might add to it, but we won't change uh, the setup of it from now on. You have two jobs today, essentially two different sheets. Uh, one is to find the common element symbols and names. So uh, there's a section with element symbols and you need to find the name in your periodic table. Then there's a section with names and you need to find the symbols in your periodic table. It will just take, take some time and some searching to get familiar with where everything is on the periodic table. Then there is the elemental tale. It is a fill in the blank uh, story of the gold dust kid. Uh, essentially each blank corresponds to an element name and it gives you the symbol and you need to find the name. So complete the blanks with the proper element that relates to that symbol and it will complete the tail. So if it doesn't make sense, uh, you'll know that you got it wrong in some way. Uh, if you guys have any questions, please let me know. Uh, thanks very much for watching Lesson 7 and I'll see you back with Lesson 8 soon, uh, which will be a much more in-depth look into uh, each element. Thanks very much.